Hi, I'm Rob Vanstone and welcome to our latest in a series of Rough Riders related historical videos. And today we're going to talk about, um, I am really sorry about this. I have to in include as many disclaimers as I can and as much groveling as I can. I am really sorry about this, but we're going to talk about Tony Gabriel. Please bear with us. There's some really good news stories to be reflected upon here. Yes, we'll talk about the 72 Grey Cup. Yes, we'll talk about the 76 Grey Cup. We're even going to mention the 13th Man game of, night of 2009. But don't leave, please, because there's also a connection between Tony Gabriel and some great moments in rider history, some times in which Rough Riders fans were celebrating, and Tony Gabriel was even part of that. So, okay, 72, 76, 2009. But there's a Tony Gabriel connection extended, extending beyond that, and I'd like to tell you some stories about that. Okay, for the sake of completeness, we're going to talk about the 1972 Grey Cup. The Rough Riders went to Hamilton to play the host Tiger Cats. Hamilton won 13 to 10 when Ian Sunter, a rookie kicker, hit a 34-yard field goal on the final play. Hamilton got into field goal range on the strength of three receptions by Tony Gabriel, his only three receptions of the game. After Chuck Ely hit Gabriel for one completion, another completion, then another completion, Chuck Ely also found Garney Henley, who made an amazing catch. Not long after that, in comes Ian Sunter, kicks the field goal. Riders lose 13 to 10. Four years later, Tony Gabriel once again. A season, season Rough Riders fans will certainly remember this and may not want to recall this in any detail, but I'm trying to be thorough here. November 28th, 1976 at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. It looked like the Riders were in excellent position to win a Grey Cup for only the second time in franchise history. They carried a 20 to 16 lead into the final minute. With 20 seconds left, Tom Clements threw a 24 yard touchdown pass to a wide open Tony Gabriel in the end zone. Jerry Organ kicked the convert and Ottawa ends up winning 23-20. Touchdown! And the Grey Cup championship for the Ottawa Rough Riders. Tony Gabriel, winner of the outstanding Canadian Player Award, making the biggest catch of a spectacular season. And a record crowd have just witnessed one of the most exciting finishes in the history of the Grey Cup. Final score, Ottawa 23, Saskatchewan 20. So, a lot of Ryder fans felt and probably still feel that they were Gabriel. They got the Tony Gabriel treatment in 1972, they got the Tony Gabriel treatment in 1976. And this is when I'm gonna digress a little bit because it's one of the cool stats, cool factoids in, in rider history. The Grey Cup in 1976 was presented to the Rough Riders captain, the Ottawa Rough Riders captain, a linebacker named Mark Cosmos. And it, at that point in his career, he was celebrating a Grey Cup victory for the fourth time. He'd won a Grey Cup in 1970 with Montreal in 1972, Mark Cosmos was with Hamilton when the Tiger Cats beat Saskatchewan. In 1973, Mark Cosmos was with Ottawa when they beat the Edmonton Eskimos to win the Grey Cup. And now, 1976, Mark Cosmos is winning a Grey Cup for the fourth time. He wore the same pair of cleats in each of those four Grey Cup victories. So if you look at it, the Rough Riders have won four Grey Cups in their history. They've won as many Grey Cups as Mark Cosmos' pair of cleats. How does this happen? Another digression about the 1976 Grey Cup game and how close the Rough Riders were to actually celebrating a victory. In those days, the Prime Minister and the Premier of the winning province were part of the trophy presentation. Pierre Trudeau was the Prime Minister at the time. Alan Blakeney was the Premier of Saskatchewan. So Pierre Trudeau knew he was going to have to go onto the field after the game, but there was some debate, at least, who the victorious Premier was going to be, and people concluded it's likely going to be Alan Blakeney, the Premier of Saskatchewan from 1971 to 1982. So Alan Blakeney walks out of the stands onto the field, is standing on the sidelines when all of a sudden he hears this ooh, and it's the Tony Gabriel touchdown catch. He actually hadn't actually seen the play, he was too busy trying to get onto the field, but then that moment happened with Tony Gabriel. So suddenly, People are waving frantically for Bill Davis, who was then the Premier of Ontario, to walk onto the field. It's like, Bill, 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 come here. And Alan Blakeney, the, this great statesman, was standing on the field just wondering what to do. He, and as he, as he put it, when I interviewed him years later, he kind of slinked back to his seat and quietly left the stadium. And it was left to Bill Davis and Pierre Trudeau to deal with the victory celebration. But there's a bit of, uh, I think, a bit of there's a happier ending for Alan Blakeney and the Rough Riders in 1989. Alan Blakeney's son was attending law school in Toronto. 
in 89. Alan Blakeney was in town, so he and his son were in the stands at Skydome when the Rough Riders defeated Hamilton 43-40 to win the Grey Cup. So he, got, he finally got to see the Riders win a Grey Cup after actually being on the sidelines at Toronto's Exhibition Stadium in anticipation of being part of the trophy presentation. Also in the stands at, at Skydome on November 26, 1989, was Tony Gabriel. So as much as he had been a key figure in the Riders losing in 72, losing in 76, he was in the stands in 1989 when the Riders won the Grey Cup. He was also in the stands in Toronto in 2007 when the Riders won the Grey Cup. So he isn't exactly a bad luck charm or isn't entirely a bad luck charm when you consider he was in the stands for, for two of those, of those Grey Cup victories. And Tony Gabriel ended up enduring a really tough loss to conclude his career. As heartbreaking as the 72 Grey Cup was for Ryder fans, as heartbreaking as 76 was, Tony Gabriel experienced the exact same thing in 1981. It was his final game. The Edmonton Eskimos beat the Ottawa Rough Riders 26-23 in Montreal. And that was it for Tony Gabriel's Hall of Fame career. So Dave Cutler kicked a field goal on the final play to give the Eskimos a victory. So as, as much as Ryder fans anguished over Grey Cup losses, the final play of Tony Gabriel's CFL career was a game-winning field goal by the other team's kicker, Dave Cutler. Okay, one more Tony Gabriel story, and we hope you can bear with this one. It's kind of quirky, kind of cool, but we have to mention the game that should not be mentioned, the 2009 Grey Cup, the 13th man, all of that. There were more than 50,000 people at Calgary's McMahon Stadium on November 29th, 2009, and maybe one or 2,000 of those were cheering for the Montreal Alouettes. Everybody else was a Ryder fan. So you can imagine or recall the funereal type atmosphere at McMahon Stadium, and Tony Gabriel was at the game. He was sitting in the stands. So after the game, people are getting onto public transit, leaving McMahon Stadium, and it's just quiet as could be. There's a few Montreal fans rejoicing, but for the most part, it's Rough Riders fans walking around in a trance. And the, the public transit was so packed at the time that Tony Gabriel and the person he went to the game with, a friend of his, uh, decided to just grab a bite to eat. So they walked around, looked for a restaurant. And while they're standing in line at the restaurant, they went, ran into a group of Rough Rider fans who recognized him and said, hey, you're Tony Gabriel. And he was invited to join them for dinner. He was happy to do so. He's such a terrific guy. So they sat around, they talked about the Grey Cup game. They talked about some old memories. And, and in fact, you know, toward the end of the conversation, Ryder fans, being the eternal optimists that they are, were starting to reflect upon a season that by and large had been a success and look optimistically, optimistically toward the future. And one of the people at the table said, talking about the 13th man ending and, and just the unimaginably bitter conclusion to that game, said, well, now we can finally forget about Tony Gabriel. And Tony Gabriel was sitting right there. Thank you so much for joining us for this latest in a series of historical videos pertaining to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Sorry again for mentioning Tony Gabriel. If you made it this far, congratulations. Very well done. I'd like to thank Don Beck. He's the owner of Clubhouse 23. That's the amazing facility in which we are sitting. If you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please feel free to do so. There's a little bell insignia, and if you click on that, you'll be notified as future videos become available. Thanks for your time today. Take care.